The Dacians were one of the hardest conquests in the entirety of the Roman history. However, will Carthage fare better in today's online battle? Let's find out. Hey, how's it going, guys? My name is Jackie Fish, and welcome back to another online battle for Total War Rome 2. Today, we are diving in with a pretty large scale online battle. This is going to be a 2 vs 2 as the forces of Dacia take on an army from Carthage. And I'm definitely looking forward to this as the players are looking like they are setting up in a very unique way which will hopefully provide for a very very interesting outcome we've got a pretty large scale cavalry uh, deployment over on this right hand side and then we have heavy infantry as well as another piece of cavalry i guess attachment over on this left hand side whereas carthage have kind of really gone very heavy on stacking their horse over on this side so if we take a look at what people are bringing just really quickly so we can kind of get a good idea on the front line we do have some dacian heavy bowmen behind them we have some of these kind of more lightly armored falksmen uh, these guys don't really tend to do a lot of uh, kind of defensive work they're much more a great flanking unit than anything else we then also have some really nice elite looking noble horsemen these kind of guys kind of have the macedonian influence stuck into them with the kind of a, like tarantine lancers very very strong indeed then on the main front line for the Dacian forces we do have this awesome armored spear unit as they are in a very defensive position looking really cool uh, that's going to basically go down the majority of the battle line is just armored spears with obviously more Thracians in support we also have some tribal peltists and other units as well for the rest of the Carthaginian force we have a kind of a mix in their cavalry force we have a lot of these new Midian mercenary cavalrymen so very good light skirmisher cavalry they're extremely fast so they can kind of uh, basically avoid getting stuck into combat then for the rest of the Carthaginian force we do have some Iberian cavalry um, and then also I think we have some more Numidians over there and then finally we do have the mercenary Iberian cavalry supported by a unit of these mercenary Italian swords it's kind of interesting that the uh, Carthaginian players are actually bringing up some of their um, some of their infantry with their cavalry to support that I like that move then for the Carthaginian line it's going to be a mix of these Libyan infantry you can see them right there we also have some African pikemen they're going to be supported by some late Carthaginian hoplites and I think that's going to be the majority of the line mixed in with Libyan infantry behind them we have some mercenary Cretan archers uh, I don't think any Balearic slingers oh yeah and then Balearic slingers and then finally the general units and a cavalry unit back here of Carthaginian cavalry and obviously the sacred band cavalry as well back there just looking very nice so a pretty decent roster for both sides I definitely think that the forces of Dacia have a very nice missile advantage even though they are going up against obviously Cretan archers if they get stuck here with them javelins they will rinse the front line especially if they can focus down them pikemen I'm excited to see though how this cavalry fight does turn off because it does seem like Carthage is being very aggressive with their cavalry and that's going to force over the rest of the Dacian cavalry into the fight um, as Dacia is looking to be very defensive with their infantry, very much in these shield walls, they've got their missiles and support and a lot of infantry in other positions. I also definitely like though how we have kind of this stacked flank on the right hand side, it makes things a lot more interesting than when we just have these kind of frontal engagements, so kind of all the cavalry is over here but the Dacian players is supporting his cavalry with some spears and also some heavy bowmen so if any charges come in or any skirmishes come in they'll kind of struggle with that it does seem like the Dacian cavalry boat did get a little bit too close and they're going to take a huge volley right there from the Numidian horses and actually get pinned down by the Iberian cavalry so a risky move there by the Dacians they obviously were looking just to get as many javelin throws off as possible that kind of made them go a little bit too deep however Carthage is also kind of overextending Dacia did lose that entire cavalry unit and the uh, mercenary Iberian cavalry took down 20 horses and now as Dacia tried to follow up I think the Carthaginians are happy to take this fight if they want to um, as the Numidian cavalry are just doing what they do best throwing them javelins and skirmishing so a pretty crazy cavalry skirmish fight so far you can also kind of see from the battlefield like that there's a big stacked flank here from Dacia whereas Carthage had a very nice overlap here so if Carthage wanted to they could definitely push this front line forward and just envelop with all of these guys. Dacia obviously do have a nice kind of reserve line here of three units of these Falksmen who can get stuck in but maybe with the Carthaginian missiles they could try and focus these guys down so there's not that much in retaliation. But right now the cavalry fight has now kind of finished. And Dacia are going to go in for another push forward with their mercenary Thracian cavalry. And we've already seen that last time it didn't go too well, but we'll have to see if this time if it can be a bit more successful. 
They are pushing up as well as some of their lances, and these lances, you can see in the distance, will decimate anything they come up against on the charge. They will rinse the Carthaginian cavalry. However, Carthage is pretty close to their front line, and that's, that's kind of the scary thing, is they don't want to overcommit. And both sides do have a lot of skirmish cavalry, so it's just a, a kind of a back and forth right now. Who can catch their opponent off guard? I do very much like, though, what the Dacian player is doing. He's bringing up missile bows, cavalry as well, to try and, you know, catch these guys off guard. And if they can, they can actually get a volley off on this Carthaginian cavalry. However, they are going to fall back. Neither player wanting to over to commit to this. Uh, we are having Carthage retaliating with some more of their mercenary Cretan and archers onto this left-hand side. So that's going to be kind of a nice little counter right to there as the sides get closer and closer towards one another. We're also getting massive movement from the Numidian cavalry. They're pushing over some of these horses over to the right-hand side where the Dacians don't have much because the battle map does kind of, you know, get a bit clumped up. The red line isn't that far out. So by pushing cavalry over here, you're going to kind of quickly just, you know, shifting around, trying to cause disruption in the enemy battle line. And we'll have to see if that does come up big. Or oh, these guys are actually going into range of the archers. The archers should be able to get a volley off here. Uh, they get a couple shots, but I think these shots will just fall short. Yeah, unfortunately, them shots do just unfortunately miss. However, the Cretan archers are moving up and... Here we go. This is actually, I think, pretty good for the Dacians. Because now the Dacians get a good volley off on the Balearic Slingers. And the, this cavalry can come in. And the cavalry is actually going to get a great charge off here. Nice moves here. This is completely worth it. Uh, killing off the missiles. These are Balearic Slingers as well. They get a frontal charge in. And the rest of these missiles aren't even moving. Keep on going, Dacia. Uh, get stuck in there against the Carthaginians. The cavalry is arriving, but this is far too late. And that was just... Uh, very, very kind of misplay there by the Carthaginians, letting your missiles get hit like that. The Dacian cavalry going in, and uh, I think he was busy moving up his battle line. And then another charge coming in. Oh my god, the Dacian player has just caught the Carthaginians completely off guard here. Charging into their cavalry, decimating the light of the Numidian horse. And oh my god, that's going to turn the tide of this battle right off the bat. I mean, realistically, they did only lose like one and a bit units of Balearic Slingers um, and some Numidian cavalry. Um, so it wasn't like the worst thing in the world, but definitely that could have been avoided. Now that's giving a huge advantage to this big clump of Dacian bowmen who can now just kind of move up into range and get stuck in. The Carthaginians though are going for a fight, but the Dacians quickly dive in to that and then they get their spearmen up and they get their cavalry stuck in. And you can see their spearmen are moving up to cover. This is a micro intensive battle right here. Um, uh, that's what I love to see. I love to see these cavalry fights of players just trying to outmaneuver one another. And this is going to be pretty risky, right? So this could actually play exactly into the point of what Carthage wants to happen in this battle. They've committed one unit of their cavalry to two units of the Dacian horse and also a unit of spears. And right now, these Cretan archers can just focus every arrow they have into this clump. Yes, they'll kill some of their own friendly units, but they're going to kill a lot of this, uh, this Dacian horse. And this Dacian horse is expensive. You know, they would. I think Dacia spent a lot more in their cavalry um, than the Carthaginians. However, it's proving worth it. Another charge. I just I don't know why Carthage aren't committing more men out here. I think they're busy kind of elsewhere on battlefield, moving up their front line, but it's really, really hurting them. Um, and Carthage is just having cavalry kind of sitting around and getting taken apart right now. Uh, they need to really get stuck in here um, and at least try and do something. Luckily, the Cretan archers are kind of trading pretty well. But all, all of a sudden, the Carthaginians are definitely lacking in the cavalry department, only having, what, two units uh, plus the unit back here and the two generals, whereas Dacia still... Uh, I say that. Dacia don't have that much left, honestly. And then their marching shots are taken down plenty of these spear warriors as well, finding their mark into the rear of that defense. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like that, that, that kind of trade was definitely better for Carthage. However... Dacia did lose a lot of horse, and they did lose some of their missiles as well, so definitely kind of like not an even trade, but Carthage didn't come out as bad as maybe it seemed. As these Cretan archers and the Balearic Slingers just traded really, really well. And as you can see, around 100 kills a pop now. Um, and the Balearic Slingers on these amount of kills. Yeah, and this is all cavalry kills as well, so they're definitely done pretty nice. Unfortunately, both Numidians are just going to get out. I mean, that's the power of the Numidians, right? Is that speed. However, they are going to take a disgusting volley of uh, javelins there from the mercenary Thracians. And really, at this point, I think Carthage just need to get stuck in with their infantry um, because they're kind of losing cavalry. The missile fight is 
either way, I think just a quick engage with the infantry would be much more beneficial because they can use this huge flank that they have to come crushing around. And um, it's always something that is very important in these online battles is to know when you need to engage inf infantry. And again, these bullet, these pretty archers are going to get charged somehow. Oh my god, why did they stop? That was a. Uh, yeah, Dacia definitely should have just charged into that and sacrificed that unit to kill this Creed and Archer unit. Oh, that, was, that was a double feint, I think. They charged both these units and then only committed to one. Uh, killing a bunch more of these Creed and Archers, yeah. That is brutal. That is really, really brutal. We can see the battle as well unfolding. Um, and there's just no cavalry to really punish this kind of missile deployment. And as I said, if, if I was the Carthaginians, I would just advance forward my front line um, and just get stuck in here because... Uh, you really need that infantry to get pushed in. And as I said, I think Daisy has spent a lot more on their cavalry. So the advantage in this battle would definitely be getting this front line in. You can see another cavalry charge there. And that's just because Carpet are just committing. that They're not supporting their missiles. And they're not quick enough to react to the charge. And now we're getting into pretty deadly range. If you go back onto play, we're getting into a pretty deadly range now where javelins can start to come into play. And again, this unit of pikes have no idea what it is doing. Uh, it's basically suiciding into the front line. So, uh, yeah, definitely not a uh, smart move here to be committing this entire unit of pikes completely unsupported. I don't really know what is happening there um, at all. Uh, but hopefully we will see uh, the front line finally pushed up from Carthage. Like, I'm just waiting for them to commit because right now they're just getting slaughtered uh, by the opponents. Uh, this is a 2 versus 2 obviously, so I guess most, maybe both players... Uh, are kind of debating what they're doing. But yeah, look at that again. This unit is just getting shot as it retreats. And now the cavalry is coming in and there really isn't much to stop them. Uh, the Daisy cavalry is going to get engaged from there. Luckily, it wasn't the Lancer cavalry. The Carthage forces are doing decently. Um, but still, the cavalry can just now come around. They're using that maneuverability to push around the kind of gaps on the slower spears. Because I mean, look at that. Some hot lights just do not have the speed to keep up with these guys. And then these lances are going to come right around and probably into the back of the Carthaginians to try and break them. Maybe not. I don't even really know where they're going. Um, they should be going over here, though, to try and finish this off. And we're still not seeing the infantry engage. Like, Carthage are just being so standoffish, and I have no idea why. Like, they're trying to form up a box over here, and it just seems like they're maybe just a little bit slow to a punch. Like, they do get a very nice volley there. I mean, that's kind of a saving grace. For the Carthaginians, in all of this engagement is that their Cretan archers have kind of traded very well with the Dacian cavalry. You know, Dacia have dealt with the Carthaginian cavalry, and then finally Carthage get a bit of their own stuck in there. Uh, unfortunately, though, the charge didn't get too successful, but they are wasting a lot of these javelins, and the javelins are actually doing more friendly fire than the cavalry, so that was actually nice. The Carthaginians finally got kind of their payback there in that battle, but the infantry lines still not engage because i mean for the most part as well uh, they still have all this cavalry that they can still deploy they've still got a general horses they've still got two fresh units of cavalry like they just can just get stuck in and they're just not cavalry the Cretan archers have traded again once again with the cavalry oh my god guys just charge i don't understand why there's so much of this cavalry skirmishing it's just unnecessary at this point like it's not going to be beneficial to anyone uh you know most units are out of ammunition or, or whatever and they're just taking missile fire. Like, either side should just commit now to, to the melee fight. I'm getting antsy after, you know, 10 minutes of skirmishing. I want some melee into this uh, bad boy as the archers again move forward. And both sides are just so scared of committing to this fight. Like, just push forward and get yourself stuck in. Get them blades bloodied. Because um, I think Carthage will do so good in this melee. As long as they don't get hit on the side by the phalanx, they'll do perfectly good. And you see, once again, the armored spears being pushed up. Uh, to try and help out in this fight. Um, so yeah, we have a very nice battle line. But just again, even neither side are really committing. And I think for the most part, Carthage actually aren't as hurt with the cavalry department. They have what, two? One fresh unit and, and general units. I think Carthage have maybe a little bit less cavalry, but not by a lot. So um, yeah, I mean, overall, I think the balance power is like definitely very telling in this engagement. We have a nice little push up here. By the missiles, and the Carthaginian cavalry is immediately going to pounce on these skirmishers. They basically want to avoid these skirmishers from getting shot at or being able to shoot as best as possible. But Dacia are quick to defend their missiles, which is very, very good. And now Dacia have really stacked this left-hand side. And hopefully they'll, they'll do a ferocious charge or something. 
I've actually never seen a 2v2 be, be this standoffish. Like, look, we're running away now. Just attack each other, goddammit. I don't know why, t why both sides are being so scared of one another. Like, look at these. Just charge them. Charge them before you lose all your men. Oh, my God. What are these skirmishes doing as well? Are they getting a little bit too close to comfort? Yeah, they did get a little bit too close to comfort. Um, I don't really know what they're up to. Like, they're trying to push forward their men, but they could have just killed so many of these African pikemen uh, right now. Uh, luckily, the archers are now over here as well to help out, like cavalry charges. They seem to be doing a good job of protecting their men. Yeah, they pulled back now, but honestly, Carthage should have just charged right at them. And now these, uh, these African pikes are just getting shot again. Exactly what happened to the last unit. And again, neither side is just ready to commit to this fight. Uh, finally, though, we are getting some infantry pushing forward. And that's going to repel them back. And a nice little javelin toss right there, killing a handful of these Thracian pikes. Um... And we've got some missiles around this side as well. So there's been a lot of movement in this battle for sure. But just no heavy commitment to, to either, either fight. Um, and I think maybe finally we're going to get it now. Um, no, just still more skirmishing. My god, the players are just so scared of getting stuck into melee combat. Definitely not your traditional battle. But finally this right flank has now been pushed up and... Uh, is going to move in, but it's going to be very vulnerable to this cavalry moving around. And also, this unit of pikemen are just going to get every single javelin thrown at them, obviously. And finally, praise Balhamam, the praise. The infantry fight has now kicked off. Oh my god. Uh, they're going to go with the Libyan swordsman. And Carpage is going to shine as long as they don't get enveloped completely and killed by all this cavalry. I think Carpage is going to be so good in this infantry engagement as long as they commit the rest of their goddamn battle line that just seems to be sitting back. Uh, finally, yeah, it is now going up um, because Daisy could have quite easily have just come into this gap and completely closed them off. I mean, just look at that. Even being enveloped, they cut through these spear warriors like nothing. Like bread through, uh, through, like bread through butter. Like a hot knife through butter. They completely slaughter them. Because this Libyan infantry is so goddamn good. Um, so now the Carthage is finally committing to this fight. They're doing really good. And also, they've got a very nice cavalry advantage here. Because they've got all that them general bodyguards that can now get stuck in. So now Carthage has finally committed to this fight. They're proving their worth. And they're doing a lot of damage. However, the Falcons are now here. And they are attacking the Libyan infantry in the back um, because they're turned to fight these heavy bowmen. Uh, that's going to be dangerous. Luckily, they do now turn again to fight the Falksman because the Falksman is a scary unit. And the Falksman have done a great job of enveloping their opponents. Really, really nice job there of enveloping the enemy. However, the Carthaginian cavalry is going to come in, and that's going to be kind of one of the vulnerable things of the Falksman is that they're just lightly armored, so this cavalry charge will be very devastating. And here we go, the rest of the battle line going in. Lots of javelins from the Libyan infantry. You can see how wounded these guys are already. And that's going to be huge. That's the line flash. And honestly, I think Carthage, as long as they don't do anything crazy, are going to have such good success in this fight. They really are. Their missiles are a little bit vulnerable, and these gaps are proving uh, pretty dangerous. But we do have a noble horse unit getting surrounded by the Carthaginian general. Unfortunately, the Libyan infantry does break because it was under so much pressure. But you can definitely kill the, the enemy general here. Uh, these other fights are going pretty well in favor of the Carthaginians. And the Carthaginians need to commit more men over to this side. There's just too many gaps. And you're also getting all the javelins coming in here as well. Um, you know, running down the Libyan infantry. Who are, who are obviously outclassing the Dacians, but these missiles are definitely proving dangerous. Um, and the Carthaginian general is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Dacian general. Uh, the Dacian general is going to pull back. And I think the Carthaginian general needs to get the hell out of there as quickly as possible. Lots of javelins going away, just picking off, you know, a decent amount. Like, this 20 Dacians going down. And this is why I was just so surprised that the Carthaginian player took so long to engage in this fight, because, I mean, look at the damage we're outputting with these javelins. This unit is being decimated by javelins. Nice focus fire there. I mean, he's going to get stuck in. Like, if they charge this now, they'll break these guys so goddamn quickly. Um, so again, I'm just, I'm just so surprised. Maybe this guy just hasn't played Carthage much, or they haven't played Carthage much. So they don't really know what they're capable of. That definitely could be the case. Garbage Union General getting a bit over over committed right there. And the flank is now coming in as these noble swords, which are more of a hard hitting units, are doing a great job against the Sacred Band. Surprised the Sacred Band did break a 23 member. I assume the Sacred Band would have done a little bit better to hold off. Oh, that guy getting lobbed over the shield. 
another soldier being broken down as well. Uh, some infantry have now come in, but the crew and archers are getting stuck yeah, forward. The Carpenter in general being very risky. Oh my god. Yeah, that poor, poor man just took about 25 javelins to the noggin. Poor man indeed. And even though the, the front line is, is looking very good for Carpenter, they're just being outflanked and used for all of these gaps. Which is definitely a you know a very big issue for them and you can see that flank has now crumbled the Carthaginian general uh general has broken on that side as well this general's down to 26 and it's just like i think this literally just came down to the garbage just being so slow to, to get stuck into that melee because as soon as they did things were going good but they got enveloped and they lost so much to uh to that initial charge and yeah, these Dacians are using their numbers. Because obviously Dacia will have new num more numbers than the Carthage. And they're using these numbers very effectively to catch Carthage off guard in a lot of these positions. And these late Carthage and hop lights are being hit in the side by the Falksman. And the Falksman will just do a lot of damage. The Noble Horse is now engaged with Carthaginian cavalry, which is going to be brutal for them. Try and withstand that. We've got another charge coming in there as well. A lot of bowmen moving around the flank. Trying to get in any, any side shots in. And yeah, these, uh, these Libyan infantrymen are, are doing the job that they need to do, but it's not going to be enough, unfortunately. I think Dacia have this one in the bag, unless there's like a mass route on the front line, which could definitely happen. However, we do have a cavalry charge coming in by the Dacian general. And I think that's going to send a shockwave. Without their general to rally them, that's going to send a shockwave throughout the uh, throughout the road, throughout the Carthaginian line a rally being popped off there to keep their men at bay and yeah if they can create any if they can not if they can win this front line it's just over for Carthage yeah and you can see that's exactly what's happening a lot of their battle lines are now just getting enveloped the archers are in such a good position right now but these aren't even archers these are javelins hitting the Libyan infantry in the back and I think that is GG indeed. So overall, it, really, it was a pretty fun battle. It seems like maybe the players uh, were a little bit newish. Maybe the Carthaginian player uh, didn't quite understand exactly what his army was capable of in that battle. I did really like the, uh, the skirmisher, kind of skirmish out there. It just kind of went on for like a, a bit too long, I think. I think either side should have committed a little bit earlier to that fight. But sometimes, you know, it's, it's not my place to, to tell the players how to play the game. I just go ahead and cast the replays. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this battle. We'll triple speed it now through the last uh, as the charges come in once more. And we'll obviously stick around to see the kills. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed these battles, make sure to go ahead and drop a like and a comment down below. Also, if you guys have any Rome 2 replays, you think you have a good one uh, where you've done some cool stuff. Um, and obviously, it's, uh, it's a close battle where, you know, it's hard to tell who's going to win towards the end. Or there's some really good tactics in it. These battles are land, violent, terror, modded. Let me know. Send them to me over on my Discord. Link is in the description. And there you go. A costly victory for Dacia. So yeah, I mean, obviously they did deploy a couple hundred more men uh, a piece, and that's really came into play. Um, the Dacian general's doing a very good job. Unfortunately, the Carthaginian, the, when the infantry got stuck in, it did so well. But by the time it got stuck in, the cavalry fight was kind of over. The missile fight was over for them. Um, and even with the missile fight, you know, going pretty poorly with a losing them, them losing a lot of their Balearic Slingers, they still racked up like a crazy amount of kills on these Cretan archers. So, I mean, Carthage still did great considering they lost a large amount of their army so early on. And these pikemen got massacred as well so hopefully you guys enjoyed this if you did drop a like and a comment down below and i'll see you guys in the next one